Okay, my name is Atay Tardesai and I'm the editor of Art India magazine. I've been the editor for the last 18 years. Art India, as you are aware, is um, India's preeminent magazine on uh, modern and contemporary art and has been uh, responsible for you know, constructing, creating and contributing to a discourse around modern and contemporary in art in India and elsewhere. It was founded by Mrs. Sangeeta Jindal 24 years back. She's deeply interested in social development projects and has been collecting her art and craft from the 1980s. As far as her art is concerned, you find an extraordinarily eclectic approach. There is a whole flurry of themes and uh, one of the sort of pointers uh, to her taste is a certain penchant for what, what I might call the texture. You know, she loves uh, textiles, she loves uh, different kinds of surfaces. There is also a whole range of subjects that the collection represents. And if you were to actually go through the entire gamut, you find that you have uh, a wide representation. You, know, you have the moderns and you have the contemporaries. The first question that I asked myself when we looked at you know, a collection like this is, what is this art doing in a space like this? How is it in some measure uh, trying to extend the boundaries of the space? What is it trying to include? And how is it trying to inflect uh, the thought processes of the people who inhabit this space? If you were to look at the installation by Shilpa Gupta that you are featuring in your show, more ways than one, getting people to introspect what I might call the histories of repression, getting all the people who come to this space to understand the values of freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, because as you know, the exhibit itself cons it consists of a huge book rack. It is really a library of around 100 books. And why are they uh, in the form they are in? you know, as stainless steel objects, which approximate the books that were written by people who were not allowed to sort of announce their authorship. So what does it mean? It, it sort of takes us back to uh, a history of repression and censorship. So it's also the way in which these processes are ingrained in our culture. And um, I remember a person of around 19 to 20 years, she sort of picked up uh, one of the books and looked at it. What was interesting was when she went from book to book, she could actually understand the map of repression. You know, she immediately sensed, you know, in the course of like 10 minutes, that this is an installation that talks about censorship and patriarchal conventions denying women and marginalized people their rights. Art in more ways than one allows us to dream. And uh, even as we do that, you know, we realize the extent of our problems and the problems of other people around us. So in, in more ways than one, uh, art uh, humanizes us, sensitizes us, and trains us to ask critical questions. The, the capacity of art to uh, help people to interrogate. I think it's very, very important. And what's more, along with that, it allows you to heal yourself. Art, literature, cinema uh, actually go a long way in, in, in making life bearable, you know, especially in conditions, um, the conditions that we find ourselves in.